Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is a series about getting data from an external API and displaying it on your Wix website. In the previous episode, I showed you how to import your backend function to the front end so that you can get the data that you called uh, using your API. And now that we have the data in the front end, all we need to do is populate the repeater using data, which is what we are going to show in this video. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step to populating a repeater with data that's not from a Wix collection or that's from a Wix collection that you used query for uh, is to set the on items ready for the repeater. Okay, and all this you can find uh, within the Wix documentation here and under the uh, repeater documentation. So we're using this on item ready over here. And it's basically a method that looks something like this. So whatever your repeater's name is, on item ready. And then you can tell each element in the repeater what to display, okay? What, depending on that specific item's data. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this over. So I'm just going to copy code and paste that right over here. And so first of all, my repeater is not called my repeater. It's called repeater. And I don't need any of this stuff here in the middle. Okay, because I'm going to populate my elements with my data and not use what they have in the example there. So I only have two elements here in my repeater. One is this pick and one is name. So all I need to do here is tap into item dot, uh, sorry, item. And then I call it like a regular Wix element. So that's going to be pick. Okay. And then we're also going to have item, which is name. Okay. And the reason that we need to use this item here and not the regular double that you that you're used to is because each item in the repeater is going to be populated using a different piece of data, which is the item data. And if you use the W here, then your whole repeater will show just the first item. Okay, so for pick, what we need to do is we need to add a source. And for the name, we need to set the name.text. Okay, so let's start with name because it's simpler. And basically what we need to do is we need to check the items that come back from our uh, API call and see the data structure. And that way we know how we need to populate these items. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna comment this out for now. And I'm going to preview our website. And here we have the items that we're gonna be using. And in each item, if we see here, we have one property that's called name, and we have another property that's called thumbnail, and it has a path and an extension. Okay, so we are going to be using those three uh, properties. So name, path, and extension. So if I go back to the editor, I'm going to uncomment this now. And text is going to be item data dot name. And for the source, we are going to be using the thumbnail. So it's going to be item data dot thumbnail dot path. And then we also need to add the extension. So I'm going to add the extension like that, plus item data dot thumbnail dot extension. Okay. And now basically this on item ready function uh, will run whenever we pass new data to the repeater. So we pass new data to the repeater and then the repeater knows to populate with that new data based on the instructions that we gave it here inside. So what we need to do now is just after we get our characters, we need to pass the data to the repeater. So I can just say here, repeater, that's right. Repeater dot data equals characters. 
Okay, and now if we preview, what we should see is the uh, data from our API displayed here in the repeater. I'll give you a heads up. That's not what we're going to see uh, because we have one more small thing that we need to deal with, which I feel is a common thing to stumble on when you're populating a repeater with an external API. So as you see here, we did not manage to populate our repeater. And the reason for that is something that's written here in the documentation. So if we go over here to data, we see here that it's very important that every object in the array must contain a unique underscore ID property. And the value needs to be alphanumeric and it needs to be a string. Okay, uh, let's just go down here, see if they describe that. No, okay, so it needs to be a string. And if you don't have that, then your repeater will not populate with your external data. Okay, so we need to manipulate our data and make sure that we have that ID property for each character. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say here, this is characters raw, I'm gonna call it, because that's our raw data. And I'm gonna create a new array, which I'm gonna call characters. And this array is going to be a map of the other array just with the added ID. And I'm gonna use the built-in ID that we have over here. So if I go to the backend code and I just run our get characters over here, and here we have some data that returned last time. So I can just go into data, results. And if we take a look at one of the items here, then we'll see that it has an ID, okay? And it's not underscore ID, but it is an ID and it is unique. And that's what we're gonna be using to create our new IDs. So if I go back to my front end code, I'm gonna say that this is characters raw.map. And this is something that you will likely need to do whenever you're populating a repeater with external data, because I think it's rare that you'll have an ID that's specifically underscore ID and specifically a string. And it's a problem that I've encountered several times. So for this, we have uh, the map function, which can just basically add something to each item in the array. So for each character, what I want to do is say that that character should be equal to an object because each character is an object. And I'm going to use the spread operator here, which basically means take everything that I have in the character, add that in, and then add one new thing over here. And what's that new thing? That's going to be the ID field. And the ID field is going to be equal to character.id, which is the previous ID, and dot to string with only one T, of course. Okay, so now what this should do is add an ID in the format that Wix wants to each of my characters. And now if I preview my website, then you can see that our repeater is now populated with the data that we got from the external API. So if you've been following along this whole series and you've managed to do this, give yourself a round of applause. Uh, this is a very important building stone for creating more advanced Wix websites. Uh, I hope you liked this series. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm gonna have more content like this coming out almost daily. Uh, if you have any questions about this video or the whole series, or you want to see something else that I didn't show you, please do leave a comment. I always respond to comments, and I will see you next time.